On Assateague Island, way back in the 1930s before it was a national park, the Civilian Conservation Corps was brought in to help control the mosquito population by digging ditches in the marsh. During the Depression, people weren't working. The economy was in the, was in the tank. So this was keep getting money into the economy. And while it may have helped the economy, it didn't do much to fight the pesky insect. What they were doing, they were draining the marshes, which they thought would help with the mosquito population, for which didn't. Um, but basically what it did, it removed the species that ate the mosquito larvae. And if the mosquito larvae don't have um, anybody preying on them, then they're going to flourish. Brian Sturgis is the aquatic ecologist at Assateague Island National Seashore. He says draining the marshes caused them to shrink, which reduced the population of certain fish and birds. Less marsh also means a higher likelihood of flooding. The waters come back and come up onto the marsh, and then it deposits material, but it also prevents it from going further inland. It breaks those, the waves and, and all that energy that's involved with the waves out across the marsh and dissipates that, so that then it doesn't hit the, the higher areas where people are living. In 2008, Brian was looking to right the wrong by setting out to fill in the nearly 59 miles of ditches. When we first started this, the, the big conundrum was what, what, how are we going to accomplish this? So what we found in looking back through time is that marshes on, that build on the backside of barrier islands are built on washover fans. When the, the water washes across the island, and deposits sand, and then the marsh grasses then sub subsequently grow. So we said, well, let's, let's think about that. So what we did, we, we utilized the beach sand that we have, and then we did some uh, work trying to figure out exactly how to deliver it. And then we came upon this, this project that we've got going now. And so for the past seven years, working only in the winter months, Brian and his crew carefully navigated their machinery across a meticulously placed temporary road. Basically, we're permitted to work when the plants are dormant. That allows us to get out here and do our work, but we don't actually kill the plants. We can go across our, our road and come back, lift the road back out at the end of the day, and then the grasses grow right back the very next year. Has anybody ever done this before? Not like this. We've spent a lot of time thinking and working on this and trying to figure out how we can best do this without disturbing the marsh and I think we've been very successful and not damaged more than we've actually restored. We've restored a lot more. And as a result, Brian says they have seen wildlife returning to the area. It's a great success. It's, it's, it's been more than what we thought it would be. Uh, the marsh has responded in ways that we didn't expect it to. Um, and it was, it was really a challenge and a... And a and, just the whole idea process to figure out how we were going to do this and make it a success. Allowing future generations the opportunity to enjoy Assateague and all its beauty. We want to always leave the natural areas so that the future generations can enjoy them. Um, that's extremely important. There's with so much development going on today that we have these natural areas that people can relate to from back when this country was started.